Hi everyone, it's Alexis from Kabuki Spa and Skin Center. We are located on Lock Street in Hamilton, Ontario. And I'm really excited you're joining me to learn how to make healthier choices when it comes to skincare. So one of the reasons for Kabuki's success, besides the experience we provide for our clients with our amazing facials, is the fact that we insist on using high quality products that are environmentally friendly, socially responsible, and do not contain harmful chemicals or byproducts. Today, we are gonna learn how to read our labels. And I'm gonna help you do that because the world of cosmetic labeling is super confusing. There is a lot of misinformation out there. The skincare and cosmetic industry is very loosely regulated, especially in Canada, which is shocking. There's basic information we need to know before deciding which skincare to choose. Do you feel like you can make a change to a billion dollar industry? As a consumer, we have great power in our purchasing decision. By making healthier choices and rejecting toxic chemicals, we are telling the industry we demand better. And in the 10 years Kabuki has been around, we have seen some really major positive change. So thank you for that, everyone. Why do we care about what we are putting on our skin? What goes on goes in. It takes about 26 seconds for some topical creams to penetrate our bloodstream. So not only are you what you eat, but you're also what you put on your skin. And I will show you later on that that can be a scary thing for sure. Ideally, ingredients are chosen based on their function, effectiveness, and environmentally sustainable properties. For example, anti-acne cream should include ingredients that are antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. Pro-aging products should provide a variety of antioxidant and cell-strengthening ingredients. Sadly, many companies choose ingredients whose main purpose is to save them money. Cutting costs and driving up profit means your health is secondary. Time to take your money elsewhere. Here are some of the most toxic ingredients uh, found in a lot of your skincare. The first one is parabens. Parabens are banned in most countries. They are the most widely used preservative in cosmetics. An estimated 75% of cosmetics contain parabens. Parabens easily penetrate the skin. They can mimic estrogen. They have been detected in human breast cancer tissue, suggesting a possible association between parabens in cosmetics and cancer. The next one on the list is phthalates. They are used in cosmetics as a synth synthetic emollient. They are used to make your skin soft, but they also make plastic softer and more flexible. They are found in PVC. The Canadian Cancer Society recommends reducing exposure to this chemical. Acrylates which is a plastic used to make a substance stable. Its concerns include cancer, reproductive toxicity, and cellular and neurological damage. Then we have our isopropyl alcohol, which unfortunately probably a lot of us are putting on our skin right now with all of the hand sanitizers. It is made from a propylene, a petroleum derivative, and is found in many skin and hair products, fragrance, antibacterial hand washes, as well as shellac and antifreeze. It promotes brown spots and premature aging of skin. Ironically, it is very drying and irritating solvent and strips your skin's moisture and natural immune barrier, making you vulnerable to bacteria, molds, and viruses. It may cause headaches, flushing, dizziness, mental depression, nausea, vomiting, and narcosis. Then we have our color pigments. These are synthetic colors made from coal tar containing heavy metal salts that deposit toxins onto the skin, causing skin sensitivity and irritation. A lot of the times I hear clients say that they have sensitive skin, when in reality, it's just a natural reaction to some of the garbage that we find in our common skincare products. Absorption of certain colors can call, cause depletion of oxygen in the body and death. Studies have shown all of them to be carcinogenic. So here is some fun ones, DEA, MEA and TEA. So what those stand for is diethanolamine, monoethanolamine, and triethanolamine. Again, these would be common ones you would see, and these are hormone-disrupting chemicals that can form cancer-causing nitrates. Already restricted in Europe, but Americans may be exposed 10 to 20 times a day. 
used to create a foam in products like shampoo, shaving cream, and bubble bath. Then we have our friend, our very popular friend, Fragrance. Fragrance on a label can indicate the presence of up to 4,000 separate toxic and carcinogenic ingredients. Symptoms include headache, dizziness, allergic reactions, skin discoloration, violent coughing, vomiting, and skin irritation. Any of you who work in an office know now why there is fragrance free signs everywhere. Clinical observation proves fragrances can affect the central nervous system, causing depression, hyperactivity, irritability, inability to cope, and other behavioral changes. This is kind of scary. Fragrance molecules stick to the inside of your lungs and never leave your body. Then we have the ever so popular mineral oil, also paraffin or paraffinum, little um, variations on the word there. Um, Kabuki got rid of doing paraffin treatments pretty much as soon as we open because of how disgusting that product is. Um, it's sadly used in many baby products. Baby oil, um, like cheap baby oil, is made from 100% mineral oil. Cheap makeup and skincare products to make them feel smooth to the touch. Mineral oil is a petroleum byproduct that coats the skin like plastic, clogging the pores. It interferes with the skin's ability to eliminate toxins, promoting acne and other disorders. It also prevents absorption of vitamin A, and babies have gotten sick from overuse of mineral oil in their little bodies. Then we have propylene glycol and butylene glycol. Propylene glycol is available in a natural plant-based form, although it is very rare. Generally, it is a petroleum plastic which acts as a surfactant, <laughs> emulsifier, dispersant, or foaming agent. So they easily penetrate the skin and can weaken protein in cellular structure, which kind of sounds like the total opposite of what we want to be doing with our skincare. The EPA considers PG so strong that it requires workers to wear protective gloves, clothing, and goggles, but there isn't even a warning label on products such as stick deodorants where the concentration is greater than in most industrial applications. Yay, isn't that fun? How awesome do you feel? Then we have our very, this one you'll see a lot, especially in foaming products, sodium lauryl sulfate. Pretty much every grocery store, drugstore product that foams, this is the first ingredient or the second one, put it down. They pose serious health threats. They're used in car washes, garage floor cleaners, and engine degreasers. And in 90% of personal care products that foam, as I said, prolonged exposure to SLS can cause eye damage, depression, labored breathing, diarrhea, and severe skin irritation. Then we have our friend triclosan. This is a synthetic antibacterial ingredient. And again, sadly, another one a lot of us are probably piling on right now. It is a chemical structure similar to Agent Orange. The EPA registered it as a pesticide, giving it a high score as a risk to both humans and the environment. It is stored in body fat and can accumulate to toxic levels, damaging the kidneys, livers, lungs, and suppression of the immune function. This is just a small list of some potentially toxic ingredients found in your cosmetics. A lot of the governing bodies like the EPA, FDA, or CIR say many of these toxic ing ingredients are safe because the dose is so small. But do they realize the average woman uses five to 20 products a day? I would say even potentially more than 20 products a day. Think about toothpaste, deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, hair products, soap, body wash, body scrub, body lotion, face wash, serums, creams, hairspray. How many do you use? Have you counted it? Do you use them every day? Most people use them twice a day. Well, I was about 13 when I started using these things. How old were you? Do you get where I'm going with this? Next, we have our beautiful green light. So green light means go. These are really awesome for you to use. Tocopherol acetate, which is right here, is vitamin E. It is an antioxidant and uh, it also is a natural preservative. That is very good. We have cetyl alcohol, which sounds like it might be a toxic chemical but not, alcohol, not all alcohol is created equally, as we will discover later on. This is a fatty organic alcohol. The important thing to remember with these types of ingredients is that it is plant-based. So you may want to look for a vegan symbol on your product. Of course, we have our essential oils. These are extractions of the essence of a plant. 
So each essential oil has a different purpose, but they are extremely potent and concentrated. This is a fun fact. To make three millimeters of a rose essential oil, it takes about five laundry baskets of hand-picked rose petals. Now you know why organic skincare and natural skincare is more expensive. If you love fragrance, you can use essential oils <clears throat> to make your own custom perfume. You can also use them in baths for their healing properties or in a diffuser as air freshener. You can clean your house with them. There are so many wonderful things you can do. Definitely go ahead and replace those toxic um, air fresheners and replace it with diffusers for essential oils. Do that right now, everybody. Then we have my super favorite hyaluronic acid. And this is important to remember that it is vegan. 80% of the pig industry is actually used for the cosmetic industry. So if you're not vegan, you may not care so much, but animal fat is not absorbed into the skin, which means it's just sitting there and it's not doing anything. Your body will recognize and absorb vegetable-based uh, molecules. Hyaluronic acid is insanely plumping and hydrating to the skin. Um, so that's an A plus ingredient right there. Uh, then we have our polyphenols, which is derivative of tea. It's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. Herbal teas are great to use as toners. And then of course we have our plants, fruits, and vegetables. And most of the time they are listed in their Latin names. So they can sound kind of bizarre. Um, Google is your friend. Um, you can always look them up that way. Um, and again, each plant has a specific quality. Um, when high on the ingredient list, it's very potent. Um, some plants encourage collagen production. Generally, what a plant does when you eat it is the same thing it'll do to your skin. Um, uh, fruits, of course, things that are high in fruit. Uh, very high in antioxidants, grapefruit and mango uh, have enzymes that exfoliate the skin. So you can use natural plant-based products to get awesome skincare. The word you hear a lot is antioxidant. Um, you're going to hear that a lot in skincare. Our bodies do not produce antioxidants. The only way to get them is through food and what we put on our skin. Antioxidants are compounds in foods that neutralize chemicals called free radicals which are unstable molecules uh, produced by oxidation in the human body. These chemicals have been linked to diseases such as heart and liver disease and cancer and are the major contributor to aging. So you got to eat your fruits and veg and you have to put them on your skin. Why is it important to read and understand your cosmetic labels? Can you rely on what companies tell us through labeling and marketing? Unfortunately, most companies utilize a method called greenwashing. And take it from us at Kabuki, it takes a lot of work trying to find a company that does not greenwash. Greenwashing is the act of misleading consumers regarding the environmental practices of a company or the health benefits of a product or service. We need to protect ourselves from greenwashing. And that begins with recognizing when it happens. This is the seven sins of greenwashing. So the first one we have is the hidden trade-off and pay attention because there is a quiz at the end of this. Um, so we have the hidden trade-off focusing on one ingredient and ignoring the general poor quality. Then we have number two, which is no proof, an environmental claim that cannot be supported by reliable third-party research. Then we have vagueness, a claim that is too broad or poorly defined. Irrelevance, making an environmental claim that may be truthful but is unimportant overall. Five, the lesser of two evils, making claims about one genuinely, genuinely good ingredient while hiding the fact that the product as a whole is dangerous. Fibbing, the least infrequent sin, though it still happens when products are advertised with flat out lies. Seven, worshiping false labels, where words and images endorsing natural ideas are used despite having nothing to do with the product. Off the top, I'm sure you have seen most of these things. As we become more educated and demand better, companies will listen. If you become skin savvy and read your labels and only purchase truly healthy products, companies will want a piece of your dollar and change their practices. Let's 
get started. Let's test your newly acquired skin savvy skills. And we are going to play a game. So I am going to show you some advertising that I got just out of a, you know, a regular magazine. And we are going to see if you can find greenwashing in these products. So the first slide, I have Aveeno Naturals. Let's take a look over here. We have Aveeno Active Naturals. Naturally beautiful skin begins with soy. In fact, it helps to even tone and texture for more radiant skin. Then it's got some before and after. Then we see again, Active Naturals. Please pay attention that that has been trademarked. Total Soy Formula is proven to improve and then it lists all the things. And then look, it's got a little picture of a plant and then it's trademarked Active Naturals Total Soy Complex. These are the ingredients. I want you to find soy. Can you find soy on there? Um, oh, soy. There it is. Soy is almost right down at the bottom. So just like food, whatever's at the top is the most, has the most in it. Ethylene, acrylic, anything with acrylic. I mean, it's a plastic, right? Another paraben, fragrance. So the irony of this whole advertising thing is it saying it's going to get rid of pigmentation well here's a news flash fragrance causes sunspots and pigmentation never ever ever use skincare with fragrance in it so the greenwashing here is they keep using the word natural and they focus on one plant while the rest of the product is actually total garbage sorry everybody sorry if that's your favorite product Okay, next we have, this is a little blurby thing from Arbonne. So Arbonne is great because they pretty much commit um, every sin. So here is a few already, pure, safe, and beneficial. And then they list all the things that they don't have. And then they have all of these different symbols here. pH, so they're focusing here, they're saying it's pH correct. Um, you know, water can be pH correct, so that doesn't mean anything. So let's look at the ingredients. So this is their Advanced Intensive Renewal Serum. Well, the first ingredient is water, so that's inactive. The second ingredient is cyclopentasiloxane. That is a plastic silicone, causes eye irritation, and is found to be toxic to marine life. Polymethyl methacrylate, so there's an acrylate. They kind of snuck it in there. And then they have another type of an acrylate. Then they have a copolymer, which is an acrylic, acrylic vinyl, polysorbate, butylene glycol, oh, sugar cane. That is an active ingredient. Okay, here we go. So now we've got all these delicious, amazing ingredients in here. Orange fruit extract, lemon, cucumber, like, oh, look how awesome all of this is. Why in God's green earth did they dump all of this garbage on top of it? I don't understand. So sorry, Arbonne. Thank you, but no thank you. And super greenwashed because people who don't read their labels are going to believe all of this and they're going to think I'm getting a totally all natural product. Not cool. Okay, here's another one that is greenwashed is Aveda. So the slogan, it's on a leaf and it says the art and science of pure flower and plant essences. So right away, you're gonna say, oh, awesome. Aveda is completely all natural. Here is the ingredient list to their tourmaline charged radiance fluid. So water, alcohol denat, no, don't put that on your skin. Glycerin, which is an in inactive uh, ingredient. It also doesn't say vegetable, so it could be animal based, which means it would clog your pores. Green tea, awesome. Clary, amazing. Then it's got some really good ingredients there, which I love. Um, but let's check out at the bottom here. They've got all of these parabens. Phenooxal ethanol, so ethanol, you know, isn't great. Methyl paraben and fragrance. Why? I don't understand. Your skincare does not need to smell pretty. It just doesn't. <sighs> so more than 95% of consumer products claiming to be green were found to commit at least one of the sins of greenwashing. I want to tell you right now, you are worth more than this. We need to ensure we are getting what we are told and that it is beneficial to us. Say no to greenwashing. 
We are responsible for making our own choices. So I hope I have helped you do that. Here are two super awesome resources. We have the ewdg.org skin deep. There is actually an application you can put onto your phone and you can scan the barcode of any product and it'll give you a toxicity score. Download that app right away. And Kabuki absolutely loves taking care of your skin. If you're interested in learning more about this and other healthy skincare, please visit our website and check out our upcoming workshops. We have a blog there. So all of this information is there as well at kabukibeauty.ca.